Hi, this video is about selection and fitness. So let's start off by answering this question. What are some factors which can move a population out of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? I want you to pause, think about it, and pause when you're ready to discuss. And as we discussed before, there are five factors that keep population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and they are shown on the screen. We're going to focus on the two of those ideas, the idea of natural selection and, and mating. First idea is what we call absolute fitness. So absolute fitness is a way to measure how many organisms a phenotype produces. And we give the variable of W. So if you think about how, how would you figure that out? Well, if you want to know how many organisms a, a phenotype will reproduce, well, you need to know two factors. You need to know how likely is it that the organisms with that phenotype are going to even survive to reproductive age. And then you need to know the average number of offspring that a particular organism will produce. And so the absolute fitness would just be a product of those two numbers, right? So it would be the survival rate times the reproduction rate. So we look at this example of our moths. We have a light and dark color moths on a light color tree. Our selection pressure, of course, is our predator that will see most likely the dark moths while the light moths will bl blend in with the tree. So in this problem, we, we're assuming that we assume that there's a 50% survival rate of our dark moths, and they produce a, an average of 10 offspring per moth. And then we have a light color moths that, that survive at, a, at 80% and roughly the same reproductive rate of nine offspring as opposed to 10. So again, how do you find the absolute fitness? You just multiply those numbers. So the fitness of the dark moths would be 0.5 times 10, which would be five organisms. And our light moth fitness would be 0.8 times 9, which would be 7.2. So you can see that our light color moths has a higher fitness rate. Makes sense because its survival rate is higher and has roughly the same reproductive rate. So let's try some on your own. I want you to, you should be able to, knowing that survival rate times reproduction rate equals fitness, you should be able to solve for fitness, reproduction rate, or survival rate. So I want you to solve for the question marks, pause, unpause when you're ready to see the answers. And again, you now you can see the answers, right? So survival rate times reproduction rate equals fitness, right? So 0 0.8 times 10, it gives us a fitness of 8. And then you can use algebra to solve for the others, right? So solving for the reproduction rate would just be fitness divided by survival rate. Solving for survival rate would be our fitness divided by our reproduction rate. This brings us to the idea of relative fitness. So we were able to solve for the fitness of the different phenotypes, but sometimes we need to actually compare the fitness levels of the different phenotypes. That's the idea of relative fitness. So relative fitness is, again, reproductive success of an organism, but it's in relation to the most fit organism. So our W subset R, since it is comparative, that's only going to range between 0 and 1, 1 being the highest, 0 being the lowest. So let's talk about what that means, right? So our dark moths have an absolute fitness of 5, light moths have an absolute fitness of 7.2. So our light moths are fitter or have a higher fitness than our dark moths, right? So the relative fitness of the light moths is actually just one, right? Because when it's compared with itself, it's one. So 7.2 divided by 7.2 gives us a, a relative fitness of one. Our dark moths, the, the fitness of that would be five divided by our standard, our most fit, so 5 divided by 7.2 would be 0.69 relative fitness. And so that's basically like saying that the dark moths are 69% as fit as the standard, our best fit light moths. Given the absolute fitness levels from our fruit flies, you should be able to solve for the relative fitness. So I want you to pause the video, solve the problem, unpause when you're ready for the answer. So again, to solve, we figure out what's our most fit organism. That's our white eyes at 500. And then we just divide the, the fitness levels by our 500. Wild type, 0 0.016. White eyes, of course, is going to be 1. Our most fit is always going to be 1 because it's being divided by itself. Wingless, 0 0.04. And short wings, 0 0.072 relative fitness. When we think about relative fitness, we can also think about unfitness. So bear with me here. So our 
Dark Moths, while it has a relative fitness of 0.69, that means that there's something working against the Dark Moths. So in some ways, it's all, you can also measure its unfitness, right? And so that would be our one minus our relative fitness, right? If one is our standard, is our best, one minus the 0.69, that would give us an unfitness level of 0.31. So you think about it like 31% of our organisms are not surviving. And so that's a crude way to think about it. But you can see that it's being selected against at 0.31. And therefore, I like color moss, but our relative fitness is one. So it's really not being it's not being selected against, right? So it would have no unfitness in a way, or an unfitness of zero. In other words, our unfitness, think of that as our there's something called a selection coefficient. It's denoted as S. So S equals the amount that a phenotype is less fit than another phenotype. In this case, our most fit phenotype. So S equals 1 minus W. Remember, W is our relative fitness. And again, since this is a comparative thing, it's between 0 and 1. So we think about, we saw for this already, right, our 1 minus W in the previous slide. So if dark has a relative fitness of 0.69, well, its selection coefficient or unfitness would be 1 minus 0.69, which would be 0.31. And our light moss has a, a relative fitness of 1, and again, 1 minus its relative fitness of 1 equals 0, which in a way is saying that there's no selection against that phenotype. So going back to our fruit fly examples, we solve for the relative fitness of those. Now I want you to solve for the selection coefficient. Pause the video, solve the problem, unpause when you're ready to see the answers. So again, remember our formula is 1 minus the relative fitness. So we can do that for all those. And then we get these numbers for our selection coefficient. Notice that our wild type was our least fit, had the lowest relative fitness, and our wide eyes had the most relative fitness. And then we compare to the selection coefficient. Well, that must mean that our wild type as the most unfit also has the highest selection coefficient. That means it's selected against the most. And our wide eyes, which are the most the highest relative fitness, will also have the lowest selection coefficient, meaning it's not being selected against. In fact, what you what you should realize at this point is that if you add the relative fitness to the selection coefficient, that will give you one in all the cases, right, for all the phenotypes. Brings us to our next set of equations. Well, that must mean that W, our fitness, equals one minus S, our selection coefficient, and then S must also equal 1 minus w. And as a recap, I want to remind you of the concepts we learned about. We learned about absolute fitness, relative fitness, and selection coefficient. Hope that was helpful. Bye now.